Hello, in this problem we're looking at systolic blood pressure. We're told systolic blood pressure of normal adults is normally distributed. That's a key word and kind of dictates what we do in this problem. We're told that the mean is 120 and the standard deviation is 5.6. When we look at our question, we're asked what percent of normal adults will have a systolic blood pressure between 25, 125 and 130. So because of normally distributed, I'm going to start my problem by drawing myself a normal curve. So there's my bell-shaped curve. I put my horizontal axis. I'm going to divide this exactly in half. In the middle is where I put the mean. And we were told the mean here is 120. Each half of my curve gets divided out into thirds, and these represent 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations away from the mean. And I do the same thing on the opposite half. Need to extend that a little bit. There we go. And these are the negative. So, we are asked to consider values between 125 and 130, so we're going to need the z-score for those. So, z-score formula is the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So, finding z, we take 125 minus the mean of 120, divide by the standard deviation of 5.6, and that gives us a value of 0 0.9. That value makes sense to us because we recognized 120 to be above the mean. Label on that is standard deviation. So that's how far 125 is from the mean. So next I do 130. Same process. And put all that in my calculator. And this time I get 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. So my next step is to put this information onto my normal distribution. So I changed my pen color so we can see this. So the first one is at 0.9, just below 1. So right about here. That should be a straight line, but this is 125 as the blood pressure, and that's where Z is 0.9 standard deviations. And then our second value is at 1.8, so just below 2 right here, and that is a blood pressure of 130, where Z is 1.8. So we're asked for the amount between these two values, so I'm doing some shading here. I want this little section of the curve. Who's, what percent of people fit in there? So in order to get percents, I need to look up the percents of these two z-scores. So I go to my chart. And my first value there is 0.9, so 18.41%. And my other value is 1.8, so 3.59%. So take those back to my problem. So this one was 18.41%. And this one is 3.59%. Now, many times when we've been asked for values between, we've take 100% and subtract. That doesn't actually work here. We really have to think about what do these values mean. So, because both of these are positive, these represent the percent above the z-score. So, when I'm talking, I'm looking at the point 0.9, from here on up, all the way, all this data out through the point, all this, is 18.41%. And then when I look at this one, that's telling me from here on up. This data in this unshaded space right in here, 
This is 3.59%. So I can figure out just in my head that my answer is less than 18% because 18% would start here and go the whole way out. But I want to start here and then stop at this next line. So I'm going to take the 18.41%, the entire tail above 0.9, and I am going to subtract out the 3.59% that was beyond my cutoff. So looking at my picture, 18.41 is all the data the whole way. But I want to subtract out this part that's not shaded because I want to stop here when I reach a blood pressure value of 130. So I do that math on my calculator and I get 14.82%. So what percent of normal adults are in this range? It would be 14.82%. This is why I always recommend drawing the picture, because the picture tells us what to do with the percents. The z-scores we can do without the picture, but then once we get these percents off our chart, it is truly the picture that tells me what to do and how to make sense of it. So we have a second question here. It says in a group of 57 normal adults, how many people would you expect to be in this range? Well, I would expect 14.82% of the 57 adults to be in this range. So what I really have is a percent problem. And I have to think back to what do I know about solving a percent problem. So one way to solve a percent problem is to take the percent, multiply it times the total, and that will equal the part. If I do this strategy, I have to change the percent to a decimal. So 14.82 divided by 100 gives me decimal 1482 times the 57, close my parentheses there, and type that on my calculator. So I got 8.44, rounding to a whole person, that would be about 8 people. So 8 people in the group of 40, 57 would be in that range. The other way to solve a percent problem is using a proportion. So we know that the percent, 14.82, would be out of 100 because percents are always out of 100. And we set an equal fraction. And we know in that equal fraction it's part over total or is over of. So the way I wrote this it was out of 57. 57 is the total or it's what it's out of so it goes on the bottom and I don't know the part. Then I can solve this proportion by cross product and divide by 100 to figure out x, and again I'll get the exact same answer, and rounding to a whole person, x is 8 people. So one of the big questions that we have is, how do I know when I give an answer as a percent versus when I give an answer as a number? And so we just have to look at our question. In this first question it asks us what percent, and so we had figured out the percent, in the second question, it asks us how many people. So we had to go a step further and take that percent and do a percent problem to figure out the people.